Welcome to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. I'm Jennifer. We'd love to give you our magazine. Go to the JenniferSheehanShow.com to subscribe. I'd love to introduce you to my guests. Hello, you guys. Good Hello. to have you. Hi. We've got Hi, George Jennifer. Fuller and May Lee Fuller with us. Yes. So May Lee Thomas Fuller. She always has to keep that that maiden well, name you know. with the, you know, from the whole music thing. Yeah, so for so many years, I was just known as Maylee Thomas, and then I got married, so I added the fuller. Uh -huh. That's kind of you. <laughs> <laughs> so my favorite thing about you guys is you guys are so cute and sassy together. Yes, we are very sassy. <laughs> so very. It's, it's interesting because you become mayor of McKinney, your second term now. Yes. And I love what you guys started doing because your name's not even first. It's Maylee and, and the, the mayor. mayor. We, I, you know, I thought once I got, it was one thing when I joined her band. That's okay. You know, Maylee Thomas. So you did band. join her I band. Joined her, she I hired me. But when I became mayor, I thought now. Now it'll be George Fuller and May Lee. Now it's still May Lee and the mayor. <laughs> For some reason they think that, or she thinks that It has that a great flows. ring. I don't it know. Does. It has yeah. a great yeah. ring May to Lee it. and the mayor. The so mayor and May Lee just doesn't have the ring. It doesn't sound I've the same. I've accepted it. You have? Yes. I'm I have so a petition I'm circulating. Well, you know what, I think it. what he's really happy about is so for years, um, People would come up to George and say, "Oh, you must be Maylee's husband." <laughs> and um, now, yeah, George Thomas. You must be George Thomas. No, it's <laughs> George Fuller. <laughs> so it is nice, though, now when she travels with me in the political circle. Right. She's. I'm now. Oh, Mrs. You're, so Fuller. you're George Fuller's wife. Yeah. You know. Right. So. so he just wanted a little fame too, because you've been like the singer of the uh, family you know. in front and center. Yeah. You so know, he's... it's the yin and the yang. You know, we 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 uh, we both. I tell my kids all the time that, you know, you, in a relationship, that you have to be willing to understand that you're both not going to be at the same place at the same time. Right. You have to be willing to go there with each other no matter where it is. Absolutely. So the ups and downs and the no's and the don't no's and the, you know. And such a dynamic. Like, I don't know another mayor that's like a guitar player, rock star kind of guy. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> and his I, wife that sings. You like. Know, interestingly enough, I was with a, a group from Friendswood, Texas the other day, and their mayor and, and entourage came up. They want to see McKinney because they heard about McKinney. They love McKinney the Square. And so they came up, and a guy from our chamber uh, was with them. And when we sat down for lunch, he said, you know, Mayor, I, I was telling everyone here at Friendswood that we have the absolute coolest mayor, uh, you're, you know, guitar player, rock star mayor, and uh, coolest mayor. And then Mike told us that he's an astronaut that walked in space twice. Oh, dear. <laughs> and, and, he's, and he was the so mayor from like... Friendswood. So, yeah, Mike is a two-time space shuttle space walking mayor so okay. that okay yeah, so he upped you baby Dar, yes he upped me <laughs> Sorry, George. i know i felt i was feeling really good until that moment now wait till wait till they start going to mars i'm sure you'll probably be the first one i'll be the first one then i'll <laughs> yes i'll be able to one up how did with. you guys meet i don't even know how you met you know i um we were both playing in bands in dallas texas and uh I was on a break in my band and I went walking around and saw this band that I was just completely uh, taken back by and the singer, who I didn't know mainly at the time, of course, but she was um, just this killer um, singer and, uh, and the band was great. And I went back to my band who I was very distraught with, you know, I'm, I'm I'm always that guitar player that's got the business side as well. So, you know, I show up when I'm supposed to be there and I'm ready to go and some musicians aren't like that. So right. I had told my band, I'm done, I want out. And I saw a band today, and I'm gonna play with that band. Okay. And through a series of things, the next week I get a call at the studio and they were looking for a guitar player. Wow. And uh, they you hired came me. came out and auditioned and yeah. Well, actually, we went out and watched you play. Yes. And then we hired him. Yeah, they want Make sure he's good enough. Well, yeah. when, I, when I called, I said, I hear you're looking for a guitar player. I'd love to audition. They, and uh, it was uh, the keyboard player said, We're not auditioning. Tell us where you're playing. So I had to call my band back that I disbanded. Oh, on Saturday no. Night. Can we say, play hey, guys, one more time? putting the band <laughs> back <laughs> together. Yeah, and we, we got back Only together. Only to tell them, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I got funny. another gig. See you later. Yeah, so they wow. hired me, and we've been playing music but together you know for what? We've been, 30 years. Um, we've been together, well, we've been playing music going on 31 years. Yeah. 
but we've been together for 30 years and married for 27. So wow. uh, we lived together for three years <laughs> before we got married, and we don't really advertise that a lot with the kids. Well, we, we do now because they're all adults. I was like, well, you are on TV yeah. right now. Yes, no, I, mean, I, mean, we, I don't know why you would <laughs> they say know that. What I mean is we, we, we really consider ourselves being married for 30 years because right. we've li we lived together for three years before mm -hmm. we got married. And uh, it's crazy. I... We're now empty nesters. Wow. Just Congratulations, recently. me too. Yeah. Jared just, it's his second year at OU. So literally just in the last mm. month, we're empty nesters. How's that feel? Fantastic. Yeah, we <laughs> thought we were gonna be really depressed. Four children, we're right? actually loving it. Four kids, yeah. a couple grandchildren, um, but they, the grandchildren live in the same neighborhood right now. They're literally across the street from us. So that's really convenient yeah. but um, you know how it is I don't know you don't know how it is yet but with grandchildren the great thing is you can have them and then you can send them back okay <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm not in a hurry because he's only 19 yeah, but yeah. don't be in a hurry but so interesting how you helped so you're a builder that's a, your real yep. job yeah the, the guitar the guitar part is the fun part but fun part and we have a guitar store event center and builder developer but yeah so the Guitar Sanctuary and mm -hmm. the Sanctuary Event Center. Yep. And so what's so cool about Adriatica is that it's all looks like from Croatia, Croatia and um, all the stone, even the Starbucks has stone all over it. And, yeah. and then you're building the Guitar Sanctuary, which is fantastic. And then the event center that you play guitar and you sing together, yeah. which is just so, it's really interesting. And then you guys live there as well. We do. We, it's, do. It's we can walk to work every day. His office is down the street from the yeah. Guitar Sanctuary. And we have, um, you know, we have a nonprofit that headquarters there. So for mm -hmm. us, it really is a live, work, and play yeah. our, atmosphere. Our, our whole world is within 200 yards of each other, every aspect of it. I love that. Yeah. Well, and and it is. Adriatica is a beautiful place. You know, Jeff Blackard, it was his concept. Um, and I joined Jeff uh, just a year or so after he began, and it's been a great journey. The whole it's so beautiful there. I enjoy yeah. it. And you know, I love, I'm so grateful that you guys would donate the event center to have my mm -hmm. first charity event no, to raise money to keep the TV show on air. Yeah, Fantastic. Right. So well, that's that. an Thank important you. event. Thank you. Yeah. I, I think so. It's, I'm excited and honored to do it. Never done anything like this before. And your event center is so beautiful. And I love that the show is a 501c3 nonprofit, yep. and and being able to have that support means so much. So thank he you knows so all much. about donating because when he built that building, I, you know, we've we've had our foundation for a while. When he built it, I said, "Gee, honey, now we have a place to have all of our events." Yes. At. <laughs> he said, "What's the name of your foundation?" But I have to you make know, money to pay for yeah. this building. <laughs> the Love, Love Life Foundation. It Love truly Life. was. That was one of the motivators um, behind building that event center. It was certainly. We have a performance academy in the guitar store and having a place for young musicians to perform, yeah. um, but also be able to offer it to the community for events. I'm excited to have Sir Earl Toome from Cool and the Gang yeah. on your stage. Sir Earl, fantastic. And Ron Valtongas will be up there because our event is on Thursday and it's gonna be so much fun. I cannot wait. So can still do work and have fun at the same time, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, I think we're supposed to. Yeah. When we come back, the Fullers go to Ethiopia and come back with a surprise. The Jennifer Sheehan TV show is real people with real stories of redemption, miracles, and overcoming. This is a TV show that gives God all the glory. The show is a 501c3 nonprofit giving back 100% of donations towards the Jennifer Sheehan TV show. We also partner with Operation Care International, serving and supporting the homeless. In a world that is spreading fake hope, only Jesus Christ and the Holy Bible have the supernatural power to change people and their circumstances. Production for the Jennifer Sheehan TV show is extensive and we need partners to keep it on air. If you believe in our cause, please prayerfully consider to be a partner for a $20 donation a month or more. May God bless you. Welcome back to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. So George, you go on a mission trip to Ethiopia. What okay. happened on that mission trip? So I went with a guy named Bob Kernuk, who's truly a modern day um, Indiana Jones kind of guy. And, and uh, he's written a lot of books. Uh, very interesting. He was actually a 
Uh, he, he was a police um, detective, a crime scene detective, and he was, uh, was an atheist. And he decided he was going to prove that uh, stories in the Bible were purely fables. And in the course of proving that, he became a, uh, a, a he became um, you know a, a Christian man. He, he realized that they were not just fables; they were actual events. And so he was going to Ethiopia, and I, I quasi invited myself on this trip because he goes every couple of year, every year actually, and he brings medical assistance to outpost hospitals for women and children. And uh, so I have no place going. I'm a builder, not a doctor. But I, I just, for some reason, it was nagging at me that I need to go. And, and so I, I got invited on the trip. And um, so we go to we go to Ethiopia. And uh, one day, I, I or one night, I'm walking around and uh, and I see a lot of young children. And when I say young, I mean two-year-old children. Uh, sleeping in the sides of the street, and streets, of course, there being dirt roads in Axum, Ethiopia. Oh, so sad. And very sad. And I, so the next morning, I asked Bob. I said, Bob, why, why are there so many little kids, you know, in the street? And he told me that there's an orphanage that uh, they just don't have the full capacity um, for everyone to stay there, and so kids are out in the street, you know, at night. And I, I really insisted that I go see this orphanage, which was, which was not part of the plan. But we, uh, he, he knew I wasn't going to take no for an answer, so we go to the orphanage, and as we're standing there, Bob tells me the horrific situation there. And the culture, you know, 80% of the uh, people in Axum, Ethiopia, adults have AIDS. And the culture, they believe that um, if a man has sex with a virgin, he passes the disease to that virgin and cleanses his body so wow. as you might imagine it's a horrific experience it's a horrific situation rape and whatnot so he tells me this as I'm standing in the orphanage and uh, and he asked me he goes George you know the the chances of these young women growing these young girls growing up to be young women and I don't know why but out of my mouth came the phrase one in a million and as I said that I, I thought, gosh, that was such a trite American phrase, not commensurate, commensurate with the levity of what he just told me. And I, uh, I was really embarrassed that I actually said that. And I took that moment to walk away and walk over to this young girl who the whole time I had been there stayed about 20 yards away from me, just biting her fingernails, very nervous, watching me. Um, and I brought the interpreter and I asked him to ask her her name. And while he's asking her, I'm in my head playing this over and over. What did that sound like, one in a million? That was so, it sounds so, you know, trite. And when he asked her her name, she answers million. That was her name. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, from there, I called May Lee, uh, you know, a little bit later, I, and I said, honey, I, I know we never talked about this, but I'm in this <laughs> orphanage, and I believe God has me here. Supposed to bring this little girl home. Bring this little girl home. And, wow. and May Lee asked me, you know, two questions. Why this little girl? Why, why adoption? We've never talked about it. And why this little girl? And I said, you know, as far as adoption, I, I can't get out of my head the idea that whatever hardship there is in adopting, right? We hadn't talked about it and in integration with your own family and on, on and on. So whatever that hardship is, it pales in comparison to the change in her life. And uh, so I can't, I can't get that out of my mind. And as far as why this particular girl, she was one of the el older young girls, which meant she was, you know, subject to that, that uh, unfortunate um, cultural, you know, you know, thing that could happen. And she was nine years old. She was nine years old. And uh, I told May Lee, pray about it. I'm going to call you back tomorrow. I had a satellite phone. An hour later, I couldn't wait, so I called her back. And <laughs> she she had all in her plan, we're going to adopt all of the kids. And uh, Your wife has such a big heart. I can tell her, so just bring them all home, please. But yeah, you know, that's, it's, it was just a powerful experience, obviously. And uh, five months later, May Lee and I went back actually three weeks later, or three or four weeks later, and we ended up get, bringing water to this orphanage and electricity and connecting them with a with a orphanage in Ax, in uh, uh, Addis, Addis Ababa. Ababa. Yeah, where where they now are able to adopt children out. When we were there, they didn't even know what adoption meant. So where in there that was particular orphanage, yeah, yeah, where there was 330 children in that orphanage now it averages about 35. So. It, we were supposed to be there for a couple reasons, right? To meet our daughter and get involved with that orphanage. And uh, and it's just been a blessing for, gosh, it's been 15 well, that years, was 14 in 2007, years. So she's yeah. uh, 23 now. Yeah, 14 years. Wow. So you knew that was a God thing when they asked, what your name? What's your name? Yeah, and uh, and there's so many other things. I'm, I'm, you know, just it's a too long of a story to tell the whole story. But there was every reason in the world that I should not have been there, including the night before at one in the morning, 
um, tearing my ankle apart and, uh, you know, just all the tendons and whatnot frayed. Um, I had to go in a walking boot and Bob Kranuk, when he saw me at the airport said, you can't go. I mean, we're walking miles and miles and miles a day. And I told him, I said, I'm going and I promise you, you will not wait on me. Right. And, uh, so did you just know in your heart that you were supposed to go? I knew I was supposed to go. I didn't know why until I found myself in that orphanage. And again, it was, it was about meeting million and it was about seeing this orphanage and, and, and uh, getting involved on the level that we've been able to. Wow, that is a yeah. beautiful story, especially knowing that that was God calling you to do that. And you know, it had to be God for, for May Lee to be okay with that, with Com no notice, no talking about it, nothing. She, she had it all worked out. We were gonna adopt the 330 kids. <laughs> yeah, we're there. We're, we're going to build bunk houses and yeah. So I love that. When we come back in our next segment, we're going to talk with George about why he decided to run for mayor of McKinney. A house is built with walls, but a home is built with memories. Firehouse Movers takes great pride and honor in serving your moving needs. Built over a fireman's code of ethics to be truthful and honest at all times, to display excellence, respect, and loyalty. We are honored for you to entrust us with your valuable memories. And we have been doing so for over 20 years with hundreds of five-star reviews. We never compromise in quality because we understand that it's easier to explain our prices than to apologize for poor service. Call us today at 972-412-6033 and let us tell you why we're passionate for what we do. Learn more at firehousemovers.com. By his grace, we live. By his will, we bond together to serve you. The Jennifer Sheehan Show magazine promotes and connects Christians and Christian-owned businesses worldwide. It's digital, nonprofit, and full of inspirational stories. The magazine is emailed, shared on our social media, and promoted weekly on our TV show, reaching millions of viewers. To subscribe to this free magazine and for advertising opportunities, go to thejennifersheehanshow.com. Welcome back to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. So George, not everybody runs for mayor. The people are smarter than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So tell me what made you run for mayor of McKinney? You know, I, uh, I just saw an opportunity to use the experiences and the skill sets that I have and have, have developed over, you know, 100 years um, <laughs> to, the, to, to benefit and just be part of the, the leadership, you know, in, in a city that was fast growing with a lot of challenges. And I felt my my experience in business and development and, and just all the community um, engagement, I, I felt like it would be something, um, one, I thought I would enjoy, and two, I thought I could actually, you know, contribute. Make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and the fact that you guys have your foundation, May Lee, and the Guitar Sanctuary, the sanctuary, you guys live there. My, one of my favorite things about Adriatica is that you have Bible scriptures in the walls. Yeah. I love that. I just feel such a sense of peace in there. I yeah. love it. Yeah, Jeff Blackard started that and we continue it on. It's, I love it. Yeah. Um, so what was the experience like for you, Maylee, when he was running? Well, you know, this is his second term, so right. I kind of had a little idea of what it was going to be like. But again, this is our community. This is where we raised our children. We've right. been there um, for the most of our married life. In fact, we got married in McKinney. Oh, you in our did? our friend's backyard there, yeah. yeah. So, and we were very engaged already. So it wasn't like that was, this was something new for us to be engaged in the community. But uh, for me, I guess... I didn't realize that I was going to be a target all of a sudden. <laughs> right. The second time around, I uh, somehow... So the first time around was easier? I think for oh, yeah. me... Yeah, it was easier. Yeah, no. def definitely. The second time, it was a, it was just because of the atmosphere, of the, the political atmosphere right now is just so divisive. I felt like they had to try to make enemies out of us. And, and I think probably the one thing that I'd want to change more than anything is to show people that... You can run for an office against someone else, and it doesn't have to be hateful rhetoric. There mm -hmm. doesn't have to be that divisive rhetoric. Um, 
you know, George George ran many, many years ago um, against a friend of ours, Brian Locke Miller, and they played golf together on the Monday before the election. I love that. And so it, it was one of those things where they literally just, they ran on their platform and they ran on the positions that they wanted to take uh, in the situations for the community. This time it felt like it was just a fight against something much larger. Yeah, it was, a, it was, a, it was, it was evil. <laughs> I was going to ask you, do you think it was spiritual warfare? Yeah, I, 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 truly. I mean, and, uh, you know, and I don't remember, and I must have missed it in the Bible where God commands us to, to have partisan allegiance over, you know, allegiance to him and to, you know, our, our brother and sister. So I must have missed that. But, um, yeah, it was a political, just partisan, um, hate-filled, anger-filled rhetoric that was, uh, you know, it hurts the community. And right. it, um, it hurts people, it hurts innocent uh, family members. And um, yeah, it was just, it was really, really difficult. Well, and also the whole coronavirus thing, you know? Yeah. I think that got a lot of people scared and a lot of people angry. And then yeah. you being mayor as you're running for your next and them yeah. thinking, you know, well, why don't we have the vaccines now? And why do we have to worry about other people? Why wouldn't you want to? I mean, every, I looked every, on social media, yeah. people were getting crazy. Everything was politicized. Yeah. Every, every aspect of every. Or why aren't thing. you wearing a mask? Or why aren't <laughs> you, why are you gathering and all this I'm watching? And I'm like, wow, yeah. you guys got hit hard. Yeah. Well, I think that the one area that George stands out in for me is that he's very strong in believing that we can listen to people's situations and positions and try to find, um, you know, try to find something in common where we can actually have an allegiance to each other and not just to a platform that they're standing on. George was very quick to meet with the enemies, and he always has. And been. there was plenty of them. And so I had a lot of meetings. And I love that about him. <laughs> and and actually, I stepped out of my comfort zone as well. I actually had an opportunity to to come face to face with some people that said some very hurtful things about me and they didn't know me and I got an opportunity to actually see them and say hey give me a chance to talk to you and then when you walk away if you want to say something about me you will you can actually say that you've met me and right you, you know because prior to that they were just jumping yeah. on a bandwagon because they felt like they needed to do that to to support their candidate because you're one of the sweetest people I know and so just you just have a, a kindness about you. And so it's very interesting that people would even be mean to you. And I'm sure you don't yeah. like that. None of us like it when people are mean to us, right? No, I'm not made up for that. I mean, I, I got, She's I'm, not built I'm for known that. as the hippie, you know, the hippie first lady and the one that always shoots the peace sign. And they even tried to turn that around and, and make it something bad. But we took it as an opportunity to make it an initiative to invite people to be more kind. And so we came up with the McKinney Kind Initiative and it's a peace sign. And, and so, you know, there's just ways that you can turn things around. And I love that about George. He's always been very good at that. And he's, some of his best friends started out as his enemy. And uh, I I've love seen him that, do that, that you can turn that around. Years. Yeah, well, I mean. What tips, all this that you've learned, what tips can you share with us on on how to change that in community when you see so much meanness and ugliness? You know, for me, um, it's, it's, God, it's just so simple. It's, uh, right now we're in a climate where um, I think, you know, as a human race, we always, we, we, like, si we like sides, we like teams, we like, um, we like, uh, you know, to be part of something. And um, I think that uh, we forget that the part that we are all, or the group that we're all part of is, you know, human beings, right? Children of God. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that um, it's to demonize people that don't have the same thoughts that you do or the same political beliefs that you do. And to have to think in terms of them as an enemy is, um, is completely undermining to who we are as Christians and as just people. And, uh, and so I, you know, I believe so firmly that um, that that to, we got to be kind. Start with kindness. Start with mm -hmm. start with uh, just accepting of uh, other beliefs, other other thoughts, and find common ground. Right. And I always say that I'm like, we can agree to disagree and celebrate the differences. Everybody's not the same. They're not all going to think the same or do things the same. But 
I think that's the beauty of everybody yeah, doing do we different. Do really want a world where everybody the exactly same? the same? I don't. Well, unless no. they're like me or. You know. <laughs> I don't even want. I don't that. want that. I don't want that. <laughs> Trust me. Well, I'm proud of you guys and mm -hmm. proud to call you friend and so grateful and thankful. And what's your website, Maylee? It's lovelifefoundation.com. I love that. I love what you're doing for the community. Thank you for supporting this TV show by having our event there and donating that. And thank you for being friends of mine. And I think yeah. you're an amazing mayor, amazing team, well, amazing singer. And well, thank you for what you do. Thank you. So I appreciate, appreciate you just inspiring people. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you, Jennifer. When we come back, you can also make a difference. We'll be right back. Running toilets waste water. Did you know the average running toilet wastes around 70,000 gallons every year? We can help. Visit BenjaminFranklinPlumbing.com to request an appointment. Back in my day, we used to call toilets the pretty. There are over 100,000 people in the United States waiting for a life-saving organ transplant. This is where the David Nicholas Organ Donor Awareness Foundation provides help. We offer free housing for those waiting for a life-saving transplant. But most importantly, we offer love and compassion from a recipient's point of view. Please visit nicholasfoundation.org and learn how you too can spread love. Please join us and be a hero and help us save a life. I had a pistol behind me. He set the home on fire and burned my whole world to the ground. The hammer, I bludgeoned him. The bullet went through the lung and through his heart. The assassin, I'm here to kill you. I felt the bullet hit me and he became suicidal. God will give you the strength to press on if you put your trust in Jesus. I'm just here to tell you that your son will not make it. And God wasn't through with it. I blamed myself for it. My father took offense to it, punched me in the face. You sold drugs and you were a pimp. Punch me in the face, knock me on the bed. When you're sexually abused, when you're physically abused, this is how big my tumor was. Wow. Told me that there were no more traces of blood clots. I figured out a way to solve the problems okay. in our family, and uh, I figured out a way to kill Dad. Who are you to say that God can't change this? For more inspirational stories, see the Jennifer Sheehan TV show Saturdays at 11:30 a.m. on Channel 33. Welcome back to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. You can also make a difference. I believe that God gives us all an assignment and something in us to make a difference in this life. If you don't know what your assignment is, pray for God to guide you and direct you and show you what that is. If you haven't prayed to receive Jesus, pray with me. Jesus, I know you died on the cross for my sin. You rose on the third day. Please forgive me for my sin. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Tune in next week. We have another powerful story for you.